back to United Rock Nations and tonight for our help us with crowbar, fucking crowbar. Hi guys, how are you? We are great. Yeah. How was this show? Pretty crazy. Damn good. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. How did you feel the fans, the people? Great, great. Always, we always get such a warm welcome here. You know, uh, every time uh, we played a tent, packed. You know, we played the main stage a few times. Really good crowd. We really seem to enjoy it. I thought, I thought they were great. You know, they really did. Excellent. And the tent, I mean, the main stage is such a thrill because it's so big and so many people. But the tent always sounds better and it's a little, little more intimate, even though it's a thousand of people. You know, but uh, it was a great, great show. Do you enjoy playing at festivals? Absolutely. Yeah. We always we joke. It. We say it's like summer camp. You see all your old friends. You yeah. see bands that Ran you've never seen kind before. Of people. It's, it's always fun. Festivals are they're, they're great. Oh my goodness! Thank you, my love. So, talking about festivals, this gig actually launches your summer tour. Is that right? Yes. You've got so many dates. Where are you going? Wow. Uh, I know it was Overhausen's the next gig in Germany. Yeah. We have a couple shows in Germany. And then the next. Sweden? Yeah, it was Sweden. And then we do the Tusca Open Air, Helsinki. Um, some more club shows. I know we're playing, uh, we're doing Rock Marathon in Hungary. Uh, yeah, Resurrection Latvia, Fest. Latvia. R R R Latvia. We're doing a show yeah, in Romania with Madball. Yeah, with Madball. Be too. Cool. Be hot, cool. Yeah. Your music, sorry. Uh, no, just, you know, a lot of different spots. Uh, Czech Republic, we have one, yeah, yeah. which we normally do really well at. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Your music is very intimate, actually. I've seen you in a venue, but um, how do you prepare your shows for festivals? It's a whole different thing, I guess. I think, honestly, we've pretty much put on the same show everywhere, yeah. everywhere we play. Um, It just and it really just depends on you know I mean there's other things that you know if the sounds really good you know it makes it easier you know the crowd's really good it makes it even easier but you know no matter what we try to put on the same show no matter how big you know big big something like this or small club it's just it's playing you know it's 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 doing what we do and that's that's what's important and do you adapt your set lists? For the, the festival? For the festivals, yeah. yeah generally because of the, the time shorter. constraints. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, it just depends, you know. Okay, well, we'll you know, it just depends on, like, the set list, how it, we think it's going to flow. Or, yeah, there's certain songs we have to play, you know, that the fans demand, basically. Mm -hmm. Right. So we always do those, and we throw in a few surprises here and there, and, you know, we mix the old with the new, and it's a nice potpourri of uh, everything. <laughs> Your last album dates back from 2016. Is there anything new in sight? Well, I mean, that's the, the plan. Tour, yeah. yeah, that's the plan. So we get some more free time uh, in between tours. We'll probably start writing because I'm sure they're gonna they're gonna be asking for another one soon. So yeah, we're looking forward to it. So yeah, how do you deal with this um, pressure, maybe of the fans demanding uh, stuff, demanding material? Do you listen to them and do you write according to what they're expecting or how, how do you... I think uh, honestly we that? just kind of make the music for ourselves yeah, really. Right. I mean if, we, if, we're, if we're not, uh, if we don't like the riffs or we don't like the songs, uh, there's See, really the no... The fans won't either. Right, yeah, exactly. There's you know? no use doing it, just... We do it for ourselves, not to sound uh, selfish, mm -hmm. but the, the band's always been that way. We do it for ourselves and we hope that the fans like it but if we like it they 99% of the time they like it so that's, that's I, I think if, if we tried to, to do something like as a goal oh, we're going to do this it, it usually when you kind of for, try to force something you mi usually end up missing the mark quite a yeah. bit so we just kind of let it let it flow and um, how do you deal with the writing process who starts the song who gives the ideas or how does it, it could, come it could, It's, it's really no uh, no rhyme or reason. Yeah, it's not a formula. It's just, Sometimes I mean, we'll just I'd say, hey, I got a riff. I go, oh, I got a riff. In or fact, like a, uh, the one thing I could think of, because we played the song tonight, the, the chorus for I Am The Storm. Yeah. We were on our way to the studio to, for the Serpinoi Live sessions, and I was picking him up at his house, 
and he was on the phone and uh, I, while he was on the phone I just picked up his guitar and I started kind of fucking around and I came up with a riff and he puts the phone and he's like hey remember that yeah. you know and we went to the studio and we started working yeah, on it you know? around. It, it, it's, it all starts with one idea my philosophy has always been if you have one killer riff you have the song's done you do, it writes itself and you write around that riff and I am a song is a perfect example but you know we have a ton more of that. it's the same same way and how, how about the lyrics how do you get the lyrics um they're just thoughts I mean I, I write metaphors mostly so something It may mean something to me and something totally different to someone else, and another guy or girl may think it's, it means his, but that's the way I like it. As long as it moves you, as long as it's emotional, as long as it, you know, it, it's cool, then that, that's the way I do it. But I don't write, you know, I don't write stories. I write just thoughts about life, you know, and, um, and so usually lyrics are very spontaneous. I mean, almost to the point of, I can't write as fast as my brain's gone. Okay, yeah, next line is this, my, you know. And it, it just, it, it happens that way, you know. Um, I mean, my wife actually has been helping me a little bit lately. And she'll just come up with like one simple line. One, I'm like, I got it, you know, and write something off of that, anything. Somebody might say, hey, like for instance, uh, on the Odd Fellas Rest record, the song December Spawn, I was telling Jimmy Bauer, I said, Dude, I don't know what to write about. He goes, man, write about anything. He goes, write about winter. And I'm like, okay. So, it, you know, that's it happened in five minutes. But it was actually Jim's idea to do it. So sometimes, uh, we, like, we'll talk to fans. And sometimes uh, we find out some of them, sometimes people get kind of disappointed in a way because they think the song's about right, something in like, particular and it's, they're very, re it's very relatable to them. And you find out, no, it was just, you know, I picked up a magazine at a truck stop and I saw you know, this quote. Yeah, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. But. So you're from New Orleans. We've got this mystical idea about New Orleans, about well, music and the bayou and everything. What is it like to grow up there and to start a band over there? Well, I mean, I think the main thing, the main difference, like that we all, especially uh, when we travel, it's like the one thing you have to, we always forget about a lot of times is certain, you know, it's, it's very relaxed there. So certain things like, uh, you know, the amount of times I've go, like uh, you go to walk out of the, the club or something with a, with a beer, you know, you can drink on the street there, things like that. And what are you doing? You know, people will freak out or, you know, uh, just, just a lot of things, stuff not being open. You right. Know, like you get things 24 hours. I mean, bars, restaurants, you know, convenience stores, grocery stores, everything. So, yeah, if you want to buy a birthday card at 3 o'clock in the morning, you, you can do it. Do it yeah. Yeah. So, things like that. But um, I don't know if it, it's, it's, it's really anything. It's hard to compare it to anything else because it's all we know. You know, because there's certain, certain things, and mainly it's convenience based, you know. Right. And uh, one last question that I forgot to. start to make the decision okay we're gonna start writing that's usually when we kind of the ideas are kind of because you know, a lot of other times we're just think we're thinking about other things we're thinking about a tour uh, that kind of stuff you know logistic things but once uh, we get the, the, the call you know okay we want something else yeah. then we kind of get in the mode to write you know and then we get pretty much we're, we're either in touring mode or writing in studio mode I'm like we don't you might come up with an idea I might come up with an idea sound check or something like that and like, wow it's a good riff but in general it's, we don't try to write on days off or not anything we just we do the touring we do the touring when it stops that's it it's time to write and every day we're writing riffs and that's you know that's what we do yeah and in fact you know and it, there's ideas that you know could come up and man remember that and we might not like put it this way uh, just give me one second I'm trying to remember. Is there uh, any clean cups or anything? That's one of mine. Mine? I'll drink it out. Yeah. Uh, That's just one. That was, you know, there was, there was a, a, a 
riffs uh, was on just the last record. I had a, written a like a like a verse and a chorus. Yeah, and it was uh, man. We I wrote that in like what was it, 2005 or something like that, 2006. You know, and all these years later, finally. We, 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 we found a spot to use it, but that's the whole thing. Like, we'll write stuff, but it will just kind of file it away, and then when it's time for the, the record, you know. What are your thoughts on the EPs, etc., just in between albums, the releasing of single songs? Or... I used to think it was a great idea because people weren't buying records, and they're still not buying records, but, I mean, at least it's gotten away from, like, these 16 and 17 songs albums that took up 70 minutes like when they first came out the CD format it got to be too much I mean it's you know there's too many filler songs and stuff right, like right. that I mean I'd rather a band put out like I did uh, one with down when I was still with them I'd rather put out five songs that kick ass than put out 12 and then only five or six are really strong because you're trying to you know I mean it, it's writing is a difficult thing it is Great time today. Yes. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we come back again soon. And, uh, just keep hitting the road and trying to keep putting out material and keep people coming out to shows and you know do it for as long as we can. Yeah. Yeah. Same just say thanks to all the Crowball fans. For next year is what 30 years. So yeah, yeah. Next year will be 30 years. Yeah. That's a long time. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's just thank, thank you all. And, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, just asking if we celebrate 30 years. Oh, I'm sure we'll have we'll, we'll, we'll have something up our sleeve for that. What yet? I don't know, but you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll know when we write it and when we come up with the celebration. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.